is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jordan Kurtz with comments from the Peanut Gallery, as well as the MMA plug powered by DenverSportsBetting.com and MileHighSports.com. Today is Monday, September 14th, and we're going to take a look back at UFC Vegas 10, what I got right and what I got wrong. As always, this segment is brought to you by Colorado Native Company. Now, let's take a jump into it and look at the main event because the main event did have a little bit of controversy with it. There was a judge who scored that 49-46 in favor of Michelle Watterson. I think that that judge was a uh, was a little bit uh, tipsy, you know, so, something like that. that. That was a very suspect ruling in that regard. I could understand it being a 48-47 contest in either direction. Personally, if you were to ask me, I believe that Angela Hill won the fight. I think that she did enough, especially within that last minute of the fifth round, to be able to win. But I'm not going to sit here and claim that that was a robbery or anything along those lines simply because it was that close of a fight that you really could have gone either direction with it. I said that Hill won in my prediction. Obviously missed that one. In the co-main event, you had Otman Azatar against Kama Worthy. And I thought the Kama was going to pull it off. I was very mistaken in this one. Otman is for real. We hadn't seen a whole ton of frequency as far as his appearances. We did know that he had explosive hands, but I didn't think that he was going to go play bongos on Kama's head like that. I just didn't think that, that was going to be a part of the equation. So, well, boom, missed that one as well. You had Roxanne Modafferi versus Andrea KGB Lee. I was very up in the air about this fight. I thought that Andrea Lee was going to pull it off, and by the initial start of the fight, it looked like she was going to do so. But I also offer you this. I feel like after that performance, in some ways, Angela Lee, or Andrea Lee, excuse me, she has, she's regressed. Andrea KGB Lee is not the same explosive fighter that she once was. You know, I, I just, I feel like in some of those, in some of those situations, she was getting outstruck by Roxy, and I love Roxy. I'm a big Roxanne Modafferi fan. You won't meet a bigger sweetheart in the entire sport of MMA, but she doesn't have elite-level striking, and she was able to strike with her and at times win those striking exchanges. So shouts out, shout out to Roxanne. You know, we, we've seen this from her before where she'll trade wins with losses. Hopefully this puts her back in, in the upward trajectory of putting a few wins together. You have Ed Herman against Mike Rodriguez. I said Ed Herman and I actually put money on the Ed Herman submission. It shouldn't have happened. I got it right, but this by all accounts should not have happened. Slow Mike Rodriguez deserved to get that technical knockout in the second round. And, you know, Chris Tyone, he he had a Mazzagatti level mess up, just like Dana said in the cage there. Ed Herman did not take a low blow in that situation. That was a clear shot to the body. And he was he was given new life and was able to recover enough as a savvy veteran to eventually find a submission in that final round. Crazy. You had Bobby King Green against Alan Patrick. Bobby Green is for real, people. Bobby Green is for real. I said in the Denver Sports Betting MMA preview last week that Bobby Green was my fighter to keep your eye on. Was I wrong? No. Moving on, we have Billy Q. Man, Billy Q is on fire right now. Who, who next for Billy Q? I mean, he, he trains from a strong camp. He goes out there and he wrecks shop every single time that we've seen him in there since he's made it to the UFC. I like what we see from Billy Q. On to the next, getting down into the prelims. That was a scrap between Julia Avila and Sajar Eubanks. You know, I personally, I thought that Avila was going to be the more technical person on the feet that was going to be able to pull it off. However, in the last couple of fights from Sarge, we've seen her really start to put it together a little bit more. and. Shout out to Sarge. I, uh, I missed that one. This one, I, on two different platforms, called it differently. On one fight, or on one, uh, one situation, I called Roberts, and in another, I called for Kroom. 
what did I place my money on? I did place my money on Kevin Kroom because at the last second, I just felt, man, there's something about a guy who is so calm and living in the present, living in the now. And the fact that he has that many more fights or had that many more fights going into the contest than Roosevelt Roberts, just that there, there's, there's not going to be the situation where the moment is too big for him. And it wasn't. He, got, he went out and he had the fastest finish in a UFC lightweight debut history. 50K right away. He made the tweet that he said, or the Instagram post, can't remember which one, but nonetheless on social media stated that going into that day, he had 64 bucks in his bank account trying to figure out how to make it to 65. Goes in there, puts on an incredible performance, walks out with a 50K performance of the night bonus. Shout out to you, Kevin Kroom. You know, that's a testament to your hard work, more than a decade plus of sweat equity in the game. Dues are paid. Congratulations, man. Then you had Alexander Romanov against Roki Martinez. A couple of weeks ago on the same, uh, the same Denver, DenverSportsBetting.com MMA preview show that we do every week with Ron Crook, I stated that Romanov was my fighter to keep your eye on in that particular week. That was when he was set to make his, his debut against uh, Rogerio de Lima. And Rogerio, obviously, he tested positive for COVID and uh, Romanov was pushed off to the next pure domination, pure domination. Romanov is big. He's fast. He's athletic. He's strong. The way that he, he five pointed Roki the other night. I mean, that that's no small feat to literally throw humans in the heavyweight division. And then he gets to win and then he body slammed his coach. So uh, sl slams all over the place for the Moldovan looking forward to see what he brings next in that heavyweight division. Then you had Jalen the Tarantula Turner against Brock Weaver. I thought that this was by far and large going to be a Jalen Turner situation. Brock Weaver has a cool story, but Brock Weaver is, if it's not a brawl, I just don't see Brock Weaver having a chance in the UFC level. Just plain and simple, it is what it is. This is now a, a few fights. The only win that he has, he was losing that fight and just happened to get illegally need and was unable to continue. So he won by the DQ. Nothing against Brock. He's a tough dude. He's a warrior goes out there and, and fights. But I think we've seen at this point that he, it, the UFC is, is not where he's at in terms of his ability and his level. You then had Brian Barbarina against Anthony Ivey. I called for the unanimous decision with Barbarina. That's exactly what happened. And then you had Sabina Mazo and Justine Kish and called for Mazo. I picked the money line on that one, and that's exactly what happened. This is the comments from the peanut gallery, as well as the MMA plug powered by DenverSportsBetting.com and Mile High Sports. This What I Got Right, What I Got Wrong segment is sponsored by Colorado Native Company. I'm Jordan Kurtz, and I will see you next week. Go Broncos.